It's been a phenomenon that has confounded U.S. intelligence officials for years. Reports of baffling medical ailments, headaches, extreme fatigue, vertigo, even brain injuries that have been reported by over 1,100 U.S. diplomats and spies all over the world. These symptoms have a name, Havana Syndrome, because they were first reported among officers serving the U.S. Embassy in Cuba's capital. But what was behind these outbreaks, and who or what was causing them, has remained a mystery. Hi, I'm Michael Isikoff, and in the new season of my Conspiracy Land podcast, I dug into the mystery, and what I found was pretty surprising. First of all, these symptoms are real, and in some cases quite serious. There are things that are identified in their MRIs and CAT scans as showing traumatic brain injury. But I also found something else that's pretty important. Ever since the first reports of Havana Syndrome surfaced five years ago, powerful members of Congress and much of the U.S. news media have played up the idea that these health ailments must have been caused by hostile attacks by a foreign power, either the Cubans themselves or, as the reports spread worldwide, the Russian intelligence services under the firm control of Vladimir Putin. We may have ongoing uh, activity targeting U.S. government officials. The mysterious invisible weapon. Directed energy attacks. I've learned that U.S. investigators have found zero evidence to back up any of these claims. In this podcast, I talked to John Cohen, until last April, the chief of intelligence at the Department of Homeland Security, speaking publicly for the first time. You would expect at some point you would find something, some type of evidence that would lead you to at least better understand what was happening, uh, and I never saw it. I also talked to members of a special task force set up by CIA Director William Burns, which concluded there were alternative, completely random and pedestrian explanations, ranging from pre-existing conditions to, in one case, exposure to an ultrasonic pest repellent to deter possums and rodents. There's lots more in this series, including, in the opening episode, an account of how the reports of Havana Syndrome set off a chain of events that upended U.S. relations with Cuba hurling them back to the dark days of the Cold War. It was President Trump who initially reversed Obama's policy of normalizing relations with Cuba, citing the reports of Havana Syndrome. Some very bad things happened in Cuba, very bad things. Among those who appear in this episode is Ben Rhodes, Obama's deputy national security advisor who negotiated the normalization of relations with Cuba and has some stinging comments about the Biden administration's policies towards that country. Why would any Cuban official ever, ever negotiate anything with America ever again? Take a listen to the new season of Conspiracy Land, The Strange Story of Havana Syndrome. It's a fascinating series and it raises an important question. Did the U.S. government and much of the media buy into a conspiracy theory about Havana Syndrome that simply never panned out?